I have a problem. I'm a financial minimalist, which means I like to save money. But my friends call me cheap. You see, I like to never spend money. I watch people like Graham Stephan for motivation, and I watch Matt Diavella for inspiration. I want to be a minimalist millionaire. And to do that, I have to take extreme money measures. I'll even reuse napkins. And when I'm done using them, I'll hang them up to dry and use them for later. Whenever I buy food, I'll reuse the plastic container and I'll use grocery bags in place of trash bags. When I travel, I save money on hotels by sleeping at Walmart. People make fun, but I think it's quite spacious. Doing this, I can afford anything. And lastly, I flush only once per week. In all seriousness, don't do any of those things, especially not that last part, that's gross. Just always remember, if it's brown, flush it down. If it's yellow, let it mellow. <laughs> but pro tip, do use those grocery bags instead of trash bags because it does actually save you a ton of money on flushing. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking and let's start this week off, but I have some big news. I finally made a course. Now, before you go away from this video thinking, oh no, Andre, not you. You've become another sellout YouTuber. Oh, we've lost another one to the dark side of the force. <sighs> Promise, this course is free. I'm really proud of it. <laughs> Let me show it to you. Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how to successfully trade some socks. First, grab a sock, and then trade it with a friend. Okay. That's a successful sock trade. Sock trading 101, yes! Wisdom at its finest. I should monetize more, but I need second opinions. <laughs> but your eyes do not deceive you. That was Graham Stephan, the man, the myth, the legend himself, the YouTube rock star. And you may have noticed that we do have the same lamp in the background of our videos, which is just the result of an unfortunate smelting accident. <laughs> but besides that, I do have a new nickname now, apparently. I'm now Vegas Graham. I was like, nah, fam, you LA Andre. All right, I'm sure you have met or have known someone out there like that who will go to the end of the earth to pinch a penny or two. You must know a friend like that because you're watching him right now. I am that friend. Smash the like button if you're my friend because I need friends. I live inside your computer screen or on your phone and someday I want to be a real boy. Now I'm what's known as a financial minimalist and ever since the early age of 19 years old, I was obsessed about money, personal finance, investing and figuring it all out. And because of that, I was called cheap a lot. And it used to really bother me. It was a huge, huge point of insecurity for me because growing up, I didn't have any money and it made me feel poor. At the very least, it reminded me that my family and I were poor because we came here from a different country with nothing. The problem was that I was cheap, not by choice, but by circumstance. And maybe it's something you've experienced yourself. If you haven't, but you're starting to learn how to invest, hopefully by now you have discovered that growing your wealth means you actually need a job. You need to be making money, saving it, investing it, and being kind of frugal. So if you haven't been called the dreaded C word, you will, and it's not gonna feel good at all. Being called the C word feels like an insult. And if you're not able to respond to those people, if you're not able to justify why you are the way that you are, then social pressure is gonna crush you and you're going to abandon the master game plan of saving and investing your money to begin with. That is unless, of course, you watch the rest of this video or just listen to one of my insults that I would respond with, where I would just say, I'm not cheap, you just think you're rich. So here's my solution on how I navigate being called that C word. Whenever someone calls me cheap, I look forward to that day because I'm like, yes, make my day. I sit them down, I pat them on the head and I say, aw, let me tell you about the differences between financial minimalism, what it means to be frugal and what it means to be cheap because they are all very different. And what's cool about this method is that it makes them go, huh, 
I didn't think about it that way. And then it becomes less about me feeling cheap and feeling poor and more about educating their ignorance and lack of understanding. And once we understand all the principles inside this video, I'm gonna tie it all in and relate it to dividend growth investing like I do so we can create some real wealth, some sweet passive income, and finally enjoy our I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-C. Do you know what that mean? It means I misspelled independence because uh, there was no E at the end of that and there should have been. Weird. In all seriousness, this is exactly how I was able to build a six-figure portfolio in Robinhood in just five short years. If I can do it, you can do it too because there is no secret to this stuff. But the principles in this video go way beyond just the social implications of being called cheap. It's also how I think about buying stocks in order to increase my value and decrease the risk of my money losing value when investing. And the best part about all this is that I've got nothing to sell you other than stonks. But what does it mean to be a financial minimalist? Because most people just think it means not spending money at all or spending money minimally. Makes sense, but that's not at all what it means. Let me give you an example. Financial minimalism is like having four cameras to record your videos with when you only need one. So maybe sell three and just use that one because who needs four cameras? Another example is instead of having a dozen credit cards, get rid of some of them, maybe hold three to five of your favorite ones for different purposes and then never close your oldest credit card because your age of history is extremely important to your credit score. And if you cut that one out, your score is gonna drop. Your age of history can start as early as your earliest credit card. So even if you're not using that one, don't close that account. You also might wanna consider consolidating all of your bank accounts and just have one checking, one savings account, and you're good to go. Park your money in a high yield savings account and your money's gonna make money while you sleep. In a nutshell, financial minimalism is like owning one or two really nice things that you actually use versus owning 10 really nice things that you pretty much never use. But does being a financial minimalist actually make you money? I don't think that it does, not by itself. All it means is keeping things simple by getting rid of your financial clutter, keeping things really automated, tracked, budgeted, simple. Simplicity, that's all it is. So what is cheap? I'm well, glad you asked. Being cheap is actually just not spending money for the sake of not spending money. In fact, being cheap actually costs you more money because you get what you pay for in the long run. In fact, you have to buy something twice over just to get any use out of it. In fact, truly cheap people will use only the price as their baseline determining factor whether or not they're gonna buy something. My favorite example, do you speak Spanish? Si, this is Rito, like burrito, and we think he's a toy fox terrier or a taco terrier. Not sure what he is, but our friend gave him to us and she gave us all the things that come with a dog. The food, the clothing, the stress, because I had no idea that raising a puppy was harder than raising a child. But we felt really bad, so we gave our friend some money and that was neither frugal nor cheap of us. We just did it because we wanted to be a decent person. But I did get some comments of people saying, Well, Andre, that's not frugal of you. And that's the complete opposite way of thinking about it. Right, baby? Here's how you actually think about it. The end result of money is joy, happiness, and fulfillment. And if you told me, Andre, go spend $100, which is exactly how much we paid to get him, go spend $100 on experiences. There is no equivalent that I could go and spend $100 on that would give me the same amount of fulfillment. Even if you said, go spend $1,000. There's no restaurant I could go to, no dinner I could eat, no vacation I could go to, no thing I could buy and spend $1,000 on that would continually give and bring as much joy joy and excitement as that little puppy brings us. But if I was cheap, I would say, I don't ever want to buy a dog because I don't want to spend money. But that's like saying, I don't want to spend money because I don't want to be happy. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I hope you and I can both agree that by making cheap decisions, you are making them at the expense of other people's joy. I'm robbing myself of joy. I'm robbing my significant other of joy. I'm like the Grinch. I'm robbing everyone's joy like, I make a good Grinch, come on. But that does bring me to the next point. God forbid, Rito needed an operation that cost $500. A cheap person would look at that situation and think, 500, that's a lot of money. You know what, I'm not gonna spend anything because I got him for free. I could probably get another dog for 
$15 for $100. And I understand the time value of money because I watch investment channels on YouTube and I know that $500 invested could be worth a couple thousand dollars in a few years from now. <laughs> a frugal person would look at that and think, $500? Yeah, that's a lot of money, but let's go find the best veterinarian to get the situation fixed and let's just do this. In fact, maybe we can look into something that's $400, something a little cheaper that would give us the same value or maybe better. Bottom line, a cheap person will just look at the price and a frugal person will look at the value as their benchmark, which is why I try to stretch every single penny of that dollar to the best of its ability. And I do so much research, especially when I'm paying for a charity. I wanna make sure every dollar goes to the charitable cause and not towards paying some dude's fat salary, which is why I love Charity Water. I'm not affiliated with them. I've just been supporting them for a long time and I love their work. I love what they stand for. They build wells in third world countries and they give clean drinking water to people all over the world. Again, not affiliated, just one of my favorite charities. But a cheap person would just look at the charitable causes, the dog, just be like, nah, don't care. But I think that defeats the purpose of having money, which is to give you fulfillment. At the end of the day, isn't that worth paying money for? But that is an emotional appeal to frugality. What if you're not into dogs and you just don't care? What if you're an analytical person and you're just not getting through to them, right? Well, the best way I can explain it is just using pure math. That's when Corey and I went to go buy a new car. And what we settled on was a 2017 Toyota Corolla with 17,000 miles. I think we got a pretty good deal on it, but it was by far not the cheapest option on the lot because we could have got a brand new car with more bells and whistles, but being financial minimalists, we looked at that and said, we don't need any of that stuff. Let's keep it simple. And being frugal allowed us to evaluate it on looking at things like the miles per gallon, the efficiency, the maintenance costs, and the resale value after five and 10 years. And after analyzing it like that, the math put us ahead in both five and 10 year periods by about three or $4,000. So even though it wasn't the cheapest car on the lot, I would say it had the best value by far. Okay, if you've gotten this far and you haven't fallen asleep somehow magically, then you're either like, yes, I'm totally into this, I wanna do that, or you're like, live a little, or you're boring, or my favorite, what if you die tomorrow? I have heard of all of these excuses, but I promise if you start implementing them, it's gonna become like the most fun video game you have ever played. You're gonna start finding meals to cook under $2. You're gonna start building your credit score. It's gonna be excellent. You're gonna start saving 50% of your income. You're gonna start investing. And before you know it, you're gonna be like a new disciple, like a, like a new age vegan that no one ever asked for. <laughs> how do you know if someone's vegan? Don't worry, they'll tell you about it. That's how I am but with money, also why I have no friends. This exact philosophy applies to investing in the stock market as well, because I get so many questions from people saying, Andre, can you recommend a stock to me that's under $10? And it's the same mentality that's thinking a little bit on the cheap side, because you're better off taking that $10 and investing it through fractional shares by buying a more expensive company, like let's say Apple, one that's healthy and profitable and paying dividends to shareholders, rather than investing $10 in to a cheap company, which may not be healthy at all. So stop thinking in terms of price, because remember, price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Let me know down in the comments below if you know who that quote is from. I'm sure you do, because you're so smart, and I'm not, because I had to Google that. No, I didn't, I knew who that was. More specifically, when I buy stocks from Robinhood, I try to focus on undervalued dividend growth stocks. That way I can buy them below their current value, and hopefully, get something that protects me from the price movement going even lower. But if it does, I'll buy more. But more importantly, I wanna know, what is the craziest thing that you have done to be frugal or cheap, or something that you know someone else has done? And with that said, go fund your account with Webull, two free stocks, one of which is worth up to $1,400. Get your free stock from Robinhood, and as usual, follow me on Instagram. I post there pretty much not daily, but sometimes from time to time. And if you've made it this far, if you have any ideas for Graham and I to collaborate on a video, something fun, not something lame, something like how to save money, but something fun. I don't know what it could be. Let me know in the comments below, but there is no way anyone made it this far. Love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you all on Monday and Friday. Enjoy. Bye-bye.